Home's audio is like kind of garbage. It's really strange. Um, yeah, so let's just get into the presentation. All right. So for this project, I wanted to do research the history of the handbag. So ever since that, ever since humans have had items to carry, we have created bags in which to carry them. This dates back to the hunter-gatherer culture. Humans used bundles and pouches made from fibers to store and transport food and tools. So normally whenever I present, by the way, just for fun to let y'all know, I, <clears throat> geez, I tried to not read directly off the slides. Like I just, it puts too much pressure on me, so I just try to go for it. So, you know, you might get a mix of both here. Okay, so the first kind of origin of a purse actually started with the pocket, which dates back to the 18th century. And pockets were actually considered undergarments, and the women would actually tie them around their waist. So it was a ribbon, and the pocket is an external type of piece. So men's pants had pockets sewn into them, but women's pockets were not like that. So the first example of a purse in history that I found um, was called a reticule, 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 or an indispensable. So a reticule is a small bag only large enough to carry rouge, powder, a fan, perfume, and a few visiting cards, but women quickly took to carrying them whenever they went out. So as you can see on the left side, the left, the left, the left, we've got various designs, a couple different shapes. Yes. So then we transition into the handbag. So at the end of the 19th century and at the beginning of the 20th, much more functional bags began to replace the reticule, as y'all saw on the slide before. So the reason they did this is because the Industrial Revolution was happening, so this meant that there were more transportation opportunities for people to take. So steam railways were becoming increasingly popular, so this meant, all right, we need to travel. We need to have more items in our bags because we're going to be gone for a longer period of time. So now the reticule is just completely functionless. It doesn't even have function anymore. So... At this time, this is when the designer Louis Vuitton came out with something other than just the trunks, trunks, trunks. So the trunks were primarily made for um, like business stuff, travel, very masculine type vibes. So this Louis Vuitton Speedy bag was the first bag that the company created specifically for women to enjoy. And at first, it was only given, it was only presented to the more rich and wealthy people. And in 1934, the designer allowed the brand to mass produce the bag for the general public. So, this was kind of a big deal, the fact that women had bags because purses were actually considered very scandalous. And the first handbags were essentially like, underwear <laughs> because let me just read on this the first handbags were essentially women's pockets with the handles attached to them but women's pockets because they were worn under a woman's skirt and close to her skin were considered undergarments so when bags for women first became popular many viewed them as vulgar or risque these early handbags were also daring one of the first examples of underwear as outerwear so, the idea of a woman parading her personal belongings in a visible pocket was an act, I don't know, akin, akin, akin to lifting up her skirts and publicly revealing her underwear. So, by the way, whenever I presented this, you guys, like I said, I didn't, like, read all that because I just don't really like making things very formal. I like to make it more calm and, like, conversation-based, so that is a tip that I have for y'all out here. So, then we get into kind of the symbolic 
um, definitely the Hermes one is like so boring to look at to me, but you can see there's like items of class. We've got like a, a expensive silk scarf. We've got expensive perfume and some gloves and it looks very kind of sterile. Um, and the reason for that is because it's showing like it's unattainable almost because it's so expensive. I think Prada did a better job in their advertisement because they did include a person in the composition. It's just more interesting, to be honest. But that is the vibes with that. Then in the 1990s, we have this pop culture surge. Paparazzi is kind of starting to hype up a little bit more and come out. And, you know, Paris Hilton is obviously one of, an, one of the icons from the 90s. And she is displaying a baguette style. And now the new era of the 2000s and beyond. Um, so this is the era of Paris Hilton and Kim Kardashian, both icons of fame and status. And their job here is they're influencing culture and they're influencing consumers buying decisions. So the it bag is in high demand. So this means whatever the paparazzi was shown taking pictures of people in, like that bag was like highly desired. So now Louis Vuitton, the maker of this bag, like there's wait lists for these kinds of things and there's lots of like excitement around them due to the fame kind of enveloping the bag. So now we talk about present day bags. So this is an interesting topic to me because with the whole social media and influencer culture, it feels so annoying to say. It feels so like millennial and like whatever, or like Gen Z. I don't even know. Whatever. Um, but the models are kind of the more important aspect in my opinion. Like the fact that Hailey Bieber is working with Versace is like really cool because Versace for a long time, just at least from my perspective, Versace is not attainable at all unless you're like a super celebrity. So to have like Hailey Bieber, who is a celebrity obviously, but like she's more accessible because she's involved in social media so heavily. So, And then we have the idea of designer collaboration. So we've got Virgil Abloh of Off-White and he is now the, I believe, the creative director for Louis Vuitton. So now we start to see like iridescent bags, clear bags, green bags, like all different kinds of materials and things that Louis Vuitton as a brand previously did not explore really at all. Um, actually, I forget the name of the designer. It's kind of like the one that has Van Gogh patterns on it and that kind of thing. Like that's the first one that comes to mind for me whenever I think of like these new bags. Um, yeah. Next is my project for my capstone. So my inspiration actually dates back to childhood. So the bunny purse on the left is the exact same purse that I used to have as a little girl. I loved it so much. And I just included these other ones of puppy dogs and stuff to show you guys that like I liked these types of things. And then also part of my inspiration is this idea of transitional objects. So a transition a transitional object is something that a child gravitates towards for comfort. So, you know, you might have a blanket or a silky or a stuffed animal or just something soft that brings you comfort. And it's this idea that um, there's something outside of your body other than you that you can form a relationship with. So that's why kids love stuffed animals and they have that one thing that they keep close to them. So now for my aesthetic inspiration for my capstone project, this is Natalie Baxter who actually graduated from my college, which is the School of Art and Visual Studies at the University of Kentucky. She graduated in 2012 and she works in soft, soft sculpture as her medium. Love all the bright colors, love how she's kind of using like like these guns, which are typically not soft at all, and they're dangerous and they're scary. Like she makes them look playful and fun. So I think it's interesting that her work addresses these like deeper topics and like societal issues and things like that in a fun way. So her studio right here, like this shot, I'm like, I am obsessed. I want that as my own studio. Next, we have Marshall Columbia and he started his brand in quarantine. He's a fashion student. Well, he already graduated, but he was a fashion student, and he worked with HBO on costume design. 
design um, and he also worked with drag queens on individual projects so that's pretty neat and he said that he takes a lot of inspiration from his childhood and he explored his identity like without even knowing it at the time like he would wear his little sisters like ballet his clothes and like play with Barbies and like all kinds of stuff he said in his interview and he's so glad that no one gave him crap about it back then like he's so thankful that he got to explore himself at that time and it brought him a lot of joy so now his work is very inspired by childhood and like kind of keeping that inner child alive which I adore that concept and that's kind of what I try to do in my own work as an artist next we have Mike Kelly and his stuff he works with found objects a lot so just stuffed animals things from the thrift knickknacks all kinds of stuff which I do too like I get most of my supplies at Goodwill and then his work also investigates societal norms and these like deeper concepts but you wouldn't really know it at first glance because of all this childlike imagery that he presents next is Jazz Harold so Jazz Harold is a new artist that I came across the other day and she's a sculpture artist based in New York City I love how soft and inviting her work is and she kind of goes over these themes of femininity, sensuality, and childlike innocence and I was reading her like artist statement or artist bio or whatever and she has this same kind of like depth and her themes are pretty similar to that in, a, in my own work and it has to do with like love, self-discovery, spiritual growth, and this idea of catharsis, if you guys know what that means. Um, catharsis is kind of hard to explain. It's just like a feeling, but if y'all want to Google, Google catharsis, go right ahead. And I also like that her work is multi-medium, so it's not just fiber. She incorporates other objects and textures into it as well. So the last artist inspiration is Anna De Messager. So her work is pretty neat too. She works with stuffed animals. She works with fibers. And she also does like photography and print media. And I love that she incorporates like the body and it kind of makes you feel a certain type of way like whenever you look at it. So here is a little bit of my previous work. And this was kind of like the springboard for everything. And uh, why do I like Vibrart? I like it because it helps me connect with my body. It's very meditative, it's comforting, it's calm. And whenever you're hand sewing things, it's a very slow, tedious process. But yeah. And the reason why I'm choosing purses is because it's something that you can keep close to your body and it's a source of comfort to have your personal belongings near you. And my the project that like super inspired this was this purse all the way on the right and it's kind of like a womb it's it feels like organs it's like a womb it's cozy it's whenever I said it feels like organs I've never felt an organ but it just like gives you that vibe <laughs> so for my actual capstone project I'm going to be making a series of at least four purses and the first one that I'm going to be working on is called love is my currency so it's going to be like a dollar sign or a dollar bill shaped bag and it's going to be kind of large and on the left are all of the fabrics that I picked up from Goodwill to use on my project and then I'm going to make something called a risograph print so if you guys don't know what Rizzo is it's a printing process. It's a certain type of ink and a certain type of printer. So you need to like go to specialty places to have one. Not everywhere has a Rezo, so it's like a really interesting thing. And I'm gonna make these like little authentication cards and it's kind of like playing off of that idea of consumerism and like if you buy a luxurious bag, it'll come with a card of authentication so you know it's real. So it's kind of like playing off of that idea, but it's going to be like the meaning of what the bag is to me. So you can take it or you can leave it just like you do with an authentication card. Some people might not care about that. So uh, this is my defined statement. I won't read the whole thing, but originally I was going to just do like fiber art projects in general and just like make stuff things but I didn't really have like a set focus and then I was going to make ASMR videos with them so I still will make ASMR videos showing you guys the bags whenever they're done but I just didn't want to do it for a grade or like for school because 
relaxation and it's my outlet. I didn't want it to like become a job and a chore in that sense, like for school, you know? So my new defined statement is I want to create a minimum of four hand sewn purses that address ideas close to my heart and are of importance to me. It will be a collection of purses, each with a unique theme, name, color palette, and message. So that is it for the presentation. Thank you guys so much for watching. Oh gosh, oops. And I will talk to